Analex 3020 CNC. Uh, my last video I modified this and I put an actual trim rod around here uh, with some special controls. There will be a link uh, at the end of the video on where to see that if you like to do something like that yourself. What I'm going to do now is put the Y-axis extension on it. That's what I got in this box right here. So that's going to require some disassembly and reassembly. I'm going to take you along for the ride on it. Okay, this here be the extension kit and I have not looked at it yet. And we've got uh, some uh, gauges I see for spacing the uh, x-axis risers on it and uh, probably another cable probably to extend the uh, for the y-axis stepper motor and some destructions in there so I'll get all this unpacked we'll get it laid out and we'll see what we got it's always neat when you unpack something and then you find a screw in the box laying loose then you're looking all over this thing trying to figure out where it came from and I have been all over this and I don't see anywhere where this screw came from or could have come from so I guess it must have fallen in at the factory when they were packing it or something well we got this here set out so what I'll need to do is uh, remove the old bed and put this one on here and of course they give you this little gauge here to uh, space the T-nuts here which are already in the in there so it'll be uh, pretty much a disassembly and then just reassembling the base like uh, I did when I first got it and I do believe I need to move the y-axis motor over to here so what I'm going to need to do here is remove the uh, x-axis stepper motor and the uh, wiring back because I need to take these loose up here so that I can get everything away so I need to take off all my little cable clamps uh, not a big deal just back these little screws out so you need to go from there and there and there and boom 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 and then I'll have to take the cover off of here and unplug the uh, limit switch wires that are actually on the 3020 because I'm going from a 3020 to a 3030 on the clamps going up the uh, z-axis there I just loosened them up or took the screw out of one side and loosened the other one because I'm going to be reusing these on here and there's no sense in taking them all the way off so this allows me to unplug my z-axis here and next I'm going to have to take this cover off the back so I can unplug the limit switches that's these two wires right here and of course don't do this with it plugged in make sure you're unplugged and you can carefully move this back out of the way. I'll identify my two Y limits here. Everything is marked. Okay, for now I'm just going to put a screw back in this so that I don't have to disconnect the fan and everything. Okay, now from here, I need to remove these screws right here from each side. And there's two ways to do it. One is with it up on its side like this, but this is actually pretty heavy. Then I've got my big uh, control box on here for my uh, router head. So the other way to do it would be to stand it up and place a piece of plywood or MDF under here as a spacer to hold that up while you remove these screws. And I'm going to go with that option. For a spacer under there, a piece of half inch thick material, this happens to be a scrap of cherry, you don't have to get that exotic. Plywood, MDF, whatever you got that's half inch thick, and it's a matter of taking out the uh, six screws from each side. I have these torqued pretty good, so I have to break them loose with the uh, my big set here. And then I'll use this driver here, this four M&Ms for keeping score there. So I'll take these off on both sides. With that out of the way, you'll need to take the uh, 
y-axis stepper motor off. There's a coupling in there. Rotate the screw till the uh, set screw is up. It's two and a half M and M's. You need to loosen that, and it is tight. If you have this uh, set screw loosened up, you can either uh, move the bed all the way to the other end, or you can flip it upside down. I think I'm just going to flip it upside down. There's four screws to take out right here, and there's some nylon spacers behind. Don't lose those. It's two and a half M and M's. You need to take those four screws out. Again, don't lose the nylon spacers because you're going to be using them. Yeah, it should slip right off of there. Except for the screw you didn't loosen all the way. There we go. There's one of my spacers. Don't lose those. Now get your four spacers or retrieve your four screws. And we are done with the old 3020 bed. Ready to put the 3030 bed on. We're going to put the stepper motor on there first. Well, I just figured out where that loose screw goes. It's for my coupling. Glad I saved it. Because the screw's missing out of there. We'll get that guy started back in the hole. I've taken the uh, new bed and turned it upside down. And I moved the uh, bed away so I've got a little bit more working space in here. So you'll be doing the reverse of putting this back on. Now I have this upside down, so here's the limit switch over here. You want to make sure your plug faces that way because all your wiring is going to be running that direction. So I'm going to, I'm not going to tighten that up yet. I want to get my uh, screws started and my spacers in there. I'm just starting the screws. I'm not tightening them up yet because that would make things difficult to get the rest of them lined up. I did that. Yeah, once all your screws are started, you can tighten them up. And there's a lot of grease on that uh, threaded shaft there, so make sure you get it all over you. Okay, and now I can tighten my coupling up. And we'll flip this back over. I'll get my spacers lined up in my little gauge. And what we want to do here is get the uh, little screws that are in the slots there. There's a long end of this. You got little protrusions here. We want to get the screws spaced like so. And then we slide this all the way back and release it. And that is where the z-axis risers is going to set. If you do this carefully everything should stay lined up. I, I didn't have any problems with this when I originally put it together as a 3020. Now it'll just be a matter of setting this back on there. Don't put it on backwards. Lining those screws up. And of course, just get them started until you get both sides all in. Once you've got all your screws started and just snug, not tightened down, but just kind of in a little bit, use your gauge here again. Go between the frame and the back, and that should slip in there. And I need to move that just a little bit. So it should fit in there and that should be snug both directions. Then you can tighten that down and I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then after you get everything snug down good, don't forget to torque these down. Oops, don't let it slip. Don't forget to torque these down. There's a lot of torque there or a lot of vibration and you don't want those coming loose because they really throw everything off. Don't go crazy and break them off, but get them good and tight. Here we are now back to the wiring department, so I'm going to take my cover off of here again. And 
And you have a new Y-axis cable, so I'll need to uh, unplug the original one here because it is much shorter. So carefully take this loose. Go over here to where the Y-axis is, a little blue connector. Take that off. And we will put the new one on. Okay, there's a difference here in how this, these pins are different sizes. You want the, uh, the smaller one, not the bigger one. If you put them side by side, one will be wider than the other. And uh, have five pins to it. That one goes on the stepper motor. This one here goes on the motherboard. So we'll just plug that in. Now we have our two limit switches here. Y minus or Y limits and those will go into the little blue connectors where we disconnected the old ones and they're polarized so they'll only go in one way you don't need to force anything they just slip right in there and now we can route these wires up here and we can close this back up but oh, we need our Y over here though Cable's a little cold, so it's a little curly. It's a little chilly in here today. Make sure you're not pinching any wires anywhere. Then you can just put the screws back in. The four corners. Now we'll go back to dressing the wires up. So we've got our uh, little clamps still there. So I'm going to get that stuff up out of the way. I need to get my two limit switch wires and my Y axis stepper motor wires route it up and under the clamp yes they do fit you gotta arrange them it's important that the uh, stepper motor cable lays flat or the uh, clamps aren't going to come down on it correctly Got to make sure I don't get the wrong cords under there. End up with things tangled up here. You'll have another cable clamp that sets right between these four uh, socket or cap screws. There's a couple holes tapped there for one of your clamps. And that will be the uh, last one you will have to include the limit switches with. Take a little bit of my slack out of there. And And next you plug your stepper motor back in. This is keyed, so it only goes in one way. Don't uh, force it or anything. You bend them pins, you'll have a hard time getting them straightened out. So we'll get that plugged in. Then we have two more clamps, one right here and one right down here by the stepper motor. And I'm routing this around the uh, limit switch. So I guess, yeah, I'm gonna route it around it. The clamp's not in a real good spot there. And the final clamp will be right down here by the limit switch, or by the stepper motor, excuse me. Okay, well I'm all hooked up here and connected. I had a hard time connecting, and then I finally figured out that while I was doing all this stuff, I actually had hit this emergency stop button, and therefore I couldn't do anything. Okay, now we'll send this home. I need to move my laptop. There we go. Need a little bit longer cord on this so I can have it back farther on the table, but everything works. Try the spindle, make sure that's still working. It should. Yep. And we are good to go. Well, there's how to turn your Analux 3020 into a 3030. 
not to be confused with a rifle of the same name. I should say rifle caliber. Uh, gives me a little bit more workspace there, a little bit more work area. Uh, it's the conversion is not hard. It's just a little time consuming. Uh, now I wouldn't even say tedious. It's just time consuming. And if you pay attention to uh, what you're doing there and the instruction sheet that comes with it here, which is pretty self-explanatory, and that little acrylic gauge they give you makes it really easy to get everything lined up. And when you do go to do your startup after this, make sure your emergency stop button isn't pushed like mine was. Have you scratching your head? So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting the thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'll put a link in the description on uh, where you can get not only the CNC, but this uh, extension kit. Thanks for watching. I'm Roger in the shop. We'll see you in the next one.